Yes, welcome on into Locked on Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day. We are dapping it up. Daryl Dapridge hanging out with us uh, as we are live, kind of, recording right after Auburn's uh, Auburn football's viewing window, which they gave us a ton of time. It was very nice of Hugh Freeze and the football program to do that. And we'll talk about the quarterbacks because I do think there are takeaways there. There's takeaways on the defense, but we've got to start with the wide receivers. Cam Coleman and a bunch of these new faces makes that room seem totally different. It really does. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was impressed with Cam Brown too. Caught the ball well, got some separation, ran good crisp routes. Yeah, sure. You know, we, we did this last year, saw a viewing window, saw a viewing window in the fall, mm-hmm. and the receiving room just looks different to me. It looked bigger last year, and I made that com- I made that comment when we came out here. I was like, man, our receivers are huge. Yeah. They can run routes and catch the ball this year. Bryce Kane got separation on a nice route to the right. corner of the end zone. Uh, Cam Brown, like I said, got had some separation and got to the end zone as well. And then Cam Coleman, just the, the slant that he ran, the way he shielded the receiver with his body and yeah. used his big body, he caught it. There was no way a defensive back was catching that ball unless he went through him. Little things like that really jumped out to me. Yeah, and I know folks that watch this every day, the everydayers get tired of me saying this, or maybe you don't. Maybe some folks like it. I don't know. But it's just hard to explain now that you've seen him in person maybe you you can kind of vouch for me on this but watching cam coleman in person there's something it's not just the size it's not just the catch radius it's not just how he moves it's just something about him when you put all that together and you watch a rep that he does and then you watch a rep that other somebody else does it's just different, Daryl. It, it is. It, you know, a lot of that's God-given, but I think that he, yeah. he really works hard. We saw what he did with the jugs machine. The word that, yeah. that, that describes him that jumps off to me is fluidity. He, everything he does is so fluid, and it's, it's not— So we're fluidity or fluid? Fluidity. Fluidity. Yes. Okay. It's, right. uh, it's an adjective. So I, I just think that he really— I don't know. He just he he's got this natural ability that makes things look easy. It's insane. But he works really hard too. So when you combine that combination, he's just different. He's just different. Yeah, there were two. You mentioned the end breaking. Well, you said slant, um, and it may have been the same one. It was it, if it was a slant, it was like a deeper slant. Mm-hmm. The one that I'm referring to was thrown by Peyton Thorn, and the way that they kind of had the bulk of the throwing drills that we got to see, there was one quarterback that was kind of throwing two guys that were rotating through. And it was kind of, you'd have a slot and an outside guy or a tight end and an outside guy. And then on the other side, you had quarterbacks that were throwing kind of deeper routes one-on-one. They were throwing to a target and it was there was one defensive back defending them. And it started out with Hank with all of the guys and then they would eventually rotate. But Peyton, when it was just him throwing to Cam Brown or, or Cam Coleman, excuse me, and, and I don't know who the DB was on it, but you talk about him using his body, shielding his body from his defender. That's kind of stuff that we haven't really seen other guys do at Auburn. And some of that's instinctive, and you got to work for it, and it's rep after rep after rep. I do think it's easier for him than other people. But that was just a moment where it's like, huh. That was Because he would box him out, and it's not like it hit him here. He had, like, he had to extend his body or his hands out to, to go get it. But he made it to where he created the reality where he was the only one who could catch that football. And, yep. and, and that's something huge. And then the next time he was throwing the football – was when they were on the other side, and so it was more seven-on-seven type stuff. And there was an in-breaking route about 15 yards downfield, and Peyton Thorne looked somewhere else. Then they went to Cam Brown and launched it, and Cam Brown – or I keep saying Cam Brown. Cam Coleman created his own separation there too. So, once again, I cannot stress enough. um, I mean, Cam Coleman looks the part. The biggest knocks on the Auburn receivers the last couple of years, there were two. Number one, you, the routes that were run did not create separation. Yeah, separation, right. And then even when there wasn't separation and the receiver would put it in a tight window, they weren't getting 50-50 balls either. Yeah. They didn't fight for the ball when the receiver had to just – or the quarterback had to drop it in a, in a tight window. I see that changing a little bit. I saw some dudes getting open, and then I saw, like you said, using the body to shield the defender – and I really like the check down aspect of what they were running. And I'm not just talking about check downs to a back out of the backfield like a yeah. swing pass. I'm talking about 
check downs 15, 20 yards downfield. That looked different to me as well offensively. Yeah, and the, yeah, there was some option stuff that they were doing. You could tell the drill was to see, okay, where is the nickel going? Is he going down or is he going over the top? Because there would be two patterns, and, and we saw the quarterbacks overthrow some of those, and then also they, they would nail some of those. All, all four of the quarterbacks, I think, were a little inconsistent in the viewing window. But, yeah, it, it just looks better. It, Bryce Kane, let's talk about him for a second. You, you said it pretty quickly there at the beginning, but – I think there were two moments that stood out to me about Bryce Kane. One was a check down, and this one was a true check down. He was running like a, a bubble almost. And I think that's what the drill was. I think it was working on the defense kind of closing in. But you just saw a different type of speed when he was kind of running the bubble and he catches it. And just the burst that you saw, mm -hmm. I thought that was really encouraging. And then we saw it again when he had maybe the best route of the day where he got behind the defense. And we talked about this when he committed. It's like, he's fast, but he's not going to like, you know, he's not blazing. You know, he's not Anthony Schwartz. He's not Tyreek Hill. But he had a knack for getting behind defensive backs. And we saw that at the viewing window just a few minutes ago. He did a great move, kind of, he got past the defense, and then he did like a flag, like, a, you know, an outbreaking route, and put himself in a situation. He didn't make the catch, but the fact that he created that separation on his own, um, we just haven't seen that a whole lot in the last five years. Well, you know, there's two types of receiver speed or how speed's measured by a wide receiver. There's flat out 4-2 yep. speed to run by people, and then there's quick bursts in space speed. Bryce right. Kane showed me that. And what he did was, for people that weren't here, he got, he got behind not one but two defenders. It was double coverage. Yep. So he actually was able to use that burst to split – a corner and a safety, get to the flag, to the corner of the end zone. And the, the defensive back made a good play. Didn't quit on the ball and mm -hmm. came through and stripped the hands is why the ball came out out of bounds. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I saw some things there that were real impressive too. I, there's no doubt in my mind that the freshmen, both pair of freshman receivers and remains to, to be seen to with play. Thompson and Simmons when they come up are going to play and get a lot because they just stand out. And I don't care if they're 18 or if they're 48. If they're the be one of the best four or five, you put them out there, and yeah. they are. I'm with you. There was a moment, uh, especially early on in the viewing window, where you know all the receivers were doing their reps and drills together, and then they pulled the slot guys, what I assume is the slot guys, um, to the side. So they pulled out Robert Lewis, Jay Fair, Bryce Kane, and there was a walk-on, 82 maybe. Um, but those were the guys that they kind of spent extra time on doing slot stuff, and they really kind of worked on getting to the outside of, uh, of a guy that was kind of, you know, covering your head up. And I just thought that was interesting that they spent extra time focusing on those guys. And we made that observation, a similar observation this time. I think it was, it was either a year ago or last fall where they pulled, like, it was Rivaldo Fairweather, Cam Brown, and Shane Hooks, and they were kind of working on outside drill stuff. And so I kind of highlight that because I remember that moment whenever that happened with your last spring And how last did that fall. pay off? It worked out. It paid out. off against Cal yep. with Fairweather catching a fade pattern outside in the corner of the inside. Yeah, so if we see a slot fade at some point work, it's like that's where it started. Yes. That's where it started yep. uh, right after, uh, you know, in this, this previous practice window here. But I like that group. I think that group's better than the slot group that was there a year ago, which is saying something because I think we both like Javarius Johnson. But I think the overall group uh, improved. From a year ago i do too and i think the, the key to me it just seems like auburn had guys that could get it done from the slot position yeah we were lacking and craving outside guys mm -hmm. that could get separation and i think again it's gonna it's gonna remain to be seen you had a little bit more of a viewing window with the receivers while i was on the defense right i was wondering what you thought about sam jackson and how he looked in the slot and outside i think he, he they had him at both at both positions i only saw him outside today that okay. does, that doesn't mean you know i was looking at other stuff too it doesn't mean that that happened i just i, I could have missed it but i didn't really see a whole lot there was a few catchable balls that he was thrown that he didn't bring down um there were a few curls that i saw him run that he caught i, I I didn't think anything one way or the other. Didn't stand out. I, no, I, I think he, I think he did the reps. I think he did what you know an average receiver would do. And so if he wants to be above average, you know, he's still wearing that yellow jersey. Yeah. And we don't really know the whole like nature of that. But he's really the. I think he's the only. He's the only guy I noticed with a yellow jersey on. So I don't I don't know how limited he actually is. So. And, and it's very apparent size wise with some of the receivers that that yeah, Auburn sure. has. 
But he's, you know, he's got quickness and he's got elusiveness, and we'll see how he's used. Yep, that's right. That's right. And quickly, while we're talking about the receiving aspect of it, Rico Walker, I, I said this two weeks ago, I'm impressed with how he moves at that size. Then Rivaldo and Mike O'Reilly, um, th- those guys continue to, to look good. They continue to look good. So let's talk about the quarterbacks, Daryl. We, uh, we saw the same rotation, but what does that mean? Realistic timelines we discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show. Brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Daryl Daprich, can you imagine? Can you imagine buying a ticket not through the Game Time app? I cannot. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's any kind of ticket. It's a variety of tickets. Let, let's list the type of tickets sure. just quickly. Sports, Sports. That's easy. Right. The theater. Right. Comedy, if you want to laugh. If you want to go to a co- comedy club, right. And then, of course, the concerts. Concerts. Concerts, which is what we've most recently you so you're you're going to support some upcoming band called Journey. If that's, right. If that's some your, new new face band. Yep, that's yeah, right. Won an open mic contest or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool that you're supporting such a small band yeah. like Journey, but you can do that via the Game Time app. Use promo code LOCKDOWN when you uh, when you create your free account via Game Time, and you'll get twenty dollars off. Game Time. Um, yeah, it, it takes the it takes the decision making really out of buying tickets today's show also brought to you by our friends at alumni hall we love alumni hall you've been to all of their physical locations in opelika auburn and huntsville you've even recently ordered online at alumnihall.com got my new brand new one month old granddaughter a little something it's a tradition i did it for the first first one do it for the next starting them young absolutely so head over to any of their three great physical locations or just order online there's no excuses i don't want to hear it it's 2024 it's time. <laughs> AlumniHall.com. Daryl, when you look at the quarterbacks, I think there were a lot of inconsistencies. I think we saw every quarterback overthrow. I think we saw every quarterback have a throw. We were like, oh, wow. Okay, that was, you know, they dropped that in the basket. I do think in this window, Peyton Thorne had the best arm. I think he, he was did. the most consistent, and I think he made the best throws. Makes me wonder. I don't know the details and the ins and outs, but I will say his arm strength looked better than it did last year. I'm talking about in practice, in the practice window. The ball did come out with more zip. Mm-hmm. Don't know if that's just a matter of being here longer, getting confidence, some red confidence, knows, whatever. Yeah, right. A lot of times, you know, when you release the ball without hesitation, it comes out better. He threw the ball. It looked good, tight, spirals to the right. Look, He looked to be throwing more to spots when a couple of the other quarterbacks looked to be – he, he was trying to throw people open, it looked like. Sure. The, and the biggest example was the Brandon Frazier down the sidelines that was there. Mm-hmm. And Frazier kind of pulled up a little bit and didn't extend, and the ball was just overthrown by about a yard. I think that was Holden's throw, Oh, actually. that was? Okay. Mm-hmm. That but, overthrew but him. Yeah. But Peyton, to, to that point, was looking like he was throwing to spots and trying to throw people open. Uh, and other guys were like throwing to men, throwing to the guys, so it, to the receivers actually after they came out of their break. Yeah, I'm curious to see how other media outlets. We got stuff up. If we miss anything, we have uh, we have kind of a group submission of observations at AuburnDaily.com. Daryl, of course, a part of that observation list as well. But I'm curious to see how other media outlets chart this because, like, technically Hank did throw a pick, but it hit the guy in the hands. It was a walk on receiver. I forget who it was. And then 18, who is Caleb Harris, right? Caleb Harris. Great hit. Oh, great Great pass breakup. The ball went into the arrows, intercepted, and and it was essentially a pick six. So I am curious to see how that's discussed and reported on, but the throw was great, but even better play by Caleb Harris. The timing was perfect on that. He got there at the same time that the ball got to the receiver's hand, and like you said, he popped the ball. And he hit it up, which is what you want. Yeah, it was a nice play. It was a really great play, one of the better defensive plays of the day that we saw. Yeah, from a pass breakup standpoint I, I think you're right I think you're right anything else about the quarterbacks Daryl I mean it was pretty routine I think there were still some inconsistencies from all four guys the order for what it's worth was the same as two weeks ago so it was Peyton Thorne Holden Gurner Hank Brown and then Walker White there was a moment when they kind of split them up where Hank was with the ones during the seven on seven first but then when they went and they all rotated of course and then when they went to pace drill it was it was Peyton as as QB one, which isn't surprising at this point, but worth noting. I think the only thing I would have liked to have seen was every quarterback have the opportunity if, a little bit to throw to the to the ones with the receivers. How come? Is it different? Is it is the ball coming out different? Is there separation? Are they throwing in a tighter window? Yeah. I, the reason why I say that is because when we watched the bowl game last year, being brutally honest, Cam Brown had the dropsies. 
everything Hank Brown threw to him, he caught. That's is it true. a catchable ball scenario? Is it where he's putting the ball in the catch radius? He caught I don't it, know he the answer to that. Today, but so. He did. And so that, that shows me, to my next point, is that he's been working on some stuff, and he alluded to that to you guys in the – press conference about what he was working on is just catching the ball yeah simplifying yeah he was asked uh, cam brown was one of the one of the players made available to local media yesterday tuesday afternoon and he was asked what are you working on and he said i got to catch the football i was like all right cool sweet and another thing just while we're talking about cam brown i gained a lot of respect for cam brown tuesday he was asked like hey why didn't you transfer you know a lot of people would have transferred in your situation and he's like man you know my dad told me to never give up my dad told me to never give up until I'm not running away. I want to be here. I want to compete. That's who I am. And then he kind of went in and was like, look, everybody feels like they know you. Everybody feels like they know what you're going through. And, um, you know, I see all that stuff that's out there. I'm paraphrasing. But I, I gained a lot of respect for Cam Coleman, uh, for, for Camden Brown. Now I'm saying the other one. I, I keep mixing the cams <laughs> up. So sorry. But uh, Camden Brown impressed me yesterday with how he handled that. I, I, it's a kid you really want to root for. He's got all the physical tools. He, when he came on campus, I just had him anointed as a physical specimen. A lot of receiver pe- one. I mean, physical specimen, that, that is no doubt. And like, he is a physical specimen. And he didn't get a lot of reps early with Harson, and then he did get some and caught a touchdown pass against LSU. I felt like that was going to be the breakout. Felt like it. Last year he had a little bit of the drop season. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think he's a definite candidate to come back this year and be a really like a comeback player on this receiving core, and I hope so he does. So when they went pace drill, the, start, the starting scenario – Let's just go through all 11. Let's see if we can do this. The starting receivers, the two outside guys, were Camden Brown and Caleb Burton. Jay Fair started at the slot. Rivaldo Fairweather was starting tight end. Peyton Thorne was a quarterback. Jarquez Hunter was a running back. And then your starting offensive line is what we all expected. So from left to right, it was Percy Lewis, who we talked to Tuesday afternoon. Very Seemed like a very likable and nice guy. So from left to right, it was Percy Lewis, Dylan Wade, Connor Liu, Jeremiah Wright, and Xavier Miller. So that, that was your starting 11. Um, there's been kind of some discussion on what that would look like from a receiver standpoint. So there you go. So it was Caleb Burton as one of the outside guys, which we discussed, and we kind of saw glimpses of that in the bowl game. That's where he played most of his outside snaps from a year ago. I'm very high on Caleb Burton. I think it makes sense to have him on the field. We were just kind of wondering, is he a slot or an outside guy? I think we're getting more of that picture now. He was one of the guys last year that really impressed me that just con- continued an upward ascent. He, the yeah. receiving room, is, as much as it struggled, Caleb Burton, in my, Caleb Burton, in my opinion, was a bright, was a bright spot mm-hmm. and really got better as the year went on. Sure, and remember, yeah, right. made the catch against Arkansas on the deep slant or the deep, the deep post that kind of got the ball rolling from well, Peyton Thorne. And, and we thought it was the classic case of, okay, well, he didn't go through spring last year either. And like, oh, you know, he was kind of late getting here. What did that development look like? And his – trajectory is kind of what we all thought it would look like and now he gets to take that next step and we'll see if it pays off but any other notes on the offense before we kind of pivot to the defense I think the running backs were exactly as we expected as yeah, far we think as the they're running good. back they're order. very good I yep. think it's an elite running back room and I think it's going to take some pressure off of whoever QB1 is yeah um, I, again I think it's there's going to be it's, I think that Auburn's going to mix in the pass more this year as far as a ratio or percentage they're going to have to but yeah. you have that running back that stable of running backs to lean on if you need it to win about to win a football game yeah and, and the order that they went through in drills and with their quarterbacks when they were doing pay stuff does this matter I don't know but the order was Jarquez Hunter Damari Austin Brian Batty Jeremiah Cobb same as last year mm-hmm. same as last year and it's like is it going to be that order or is it the three and then Batty is kind of your situational guy outside of the depth chart. That's kind of what my gut feeling says. I think that's how he'd be used best because you want him in on third downs to be able to catch and all that, but we'll see. You say that, but then like I feel good about Jarquez Hunter catching passes. I feel good about Damari Austin catching passes and Jeremiah Cobb. Right. So that may not even be a good take. I don't know. I got to think about that some more. But all in all, uh, yeah, th- th- those are the notes on the offense. We'll pivot to the defense. Who stood out on the defensive side of the ball? We tell you in a second, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Right now, you can head over to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. It's time. It's postseason basketball. It's postseason basketball. If you're not set up and ready to go on FanDuel, you need to be. You need to be right now before the SEC tournament starts tonight, right? Wednesday? No. Yes. Starts sure Wednesday. Does. Sure does. Yeah, so make sure you're ready to go tonight and uh, so you can get in on 
all of the action. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Right now, you can win $200 on your first bet uh, as long as you bet $5 or more. You can get that taken care of. Lock, uh, yeah, FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's tough doing those for memory sometimes. All right, so now let's pivot and talk about these defensive players. Let's, let's, you want to start with DBs or linebackers? Linebackers. Okay, so you spent more time watching the defense than I did. Right. Um, but there's a lot to like. Um, Dory Mayusi and Austin Keys lining up next to each other. Mm-hmm. A lot of athleticism on the field when that happens. Yeah, and I think that might be a, a little bit of a symptom of, I saw Asante getting some treatment on a calf. So he probably would be lined up. But I, Mausi and Keys look That's good gonna next happen, to each other. That's going to happen, though. I it's mean, all, all three of those guys exactly. need to be able to play with each other. It's going to sure. happen. And Woodyard looked good to me. Okay. And in, in, in space and in explosiveness. And he was getting a share of the reps with Asante next to each other. So, you know, I don't know if that means that's your four dudes. You can kind of connect the dots. It Who might knows? be. It would make sense it for those to be the four guys. But Woodyard looked good. He looked bigger. He looked a little bit more explosive than he did in the fall. Um, can, can I can I remove this hat and put a tinfoil hat on and just ask you a question yes. real quick? Do you give more reps to Woodyard over the incoming freshman so Woodyard doesn't transfer? We talked about that before. Um, you can't worry about that. You've just got to give the reps to who okay. you think is going right. to be your just guy in the fall. Just asking the question. Yeah. Sure. And if it's, if it's Woodyard, great. If it's not and a freshman passes him, go on with your life's yeah. work. It right. is what it is because you got to worry about you got to worry about the fall. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so then defensive backs, Jaron Thompson, lean, mm-hmm. Champ Anthony, straight muscle. Straight, just lean muscle with Champ Anthony. And both of those guys are really rangy. Both those guys have bursts. I think both of those guys are going to have very large roles in this defense. But the defensive back room as a whole, it seems larger now because Terrence Love, I added the note at AuburnDaily.com, like Terrence Love, which you know how I feel about him. You love him. Love him. Love Terrence Love. But, you know, larger than I expected him to be. You know, J.D. Rim is Mm -hmm. a big dude. Mm -hmm. He's big. Um, Antonio Kite, I think he had a really good pass breakup, uh, broke up a curl. I forget who he was defending, but there's just a lot of these defensive backs that have good size, that have good versatility. I don't know. I I, I just I, I don't I know we lost a lot in that room. I'm just not worried about it. I think it's one of the it's the second right now. I think it's the second strongest room. I do. I, I would put that. Well, the offensive line maybe, but what I saw is we had the reputation, or the reputation came with Laquan Robinson as being a thumper. Yeah. When I got to stand five feet from him, I didn't realize how physically big and put together he is. Okay. Too. Thompson's the more longer, leaner, you know, kind of can get – maybe could play some slot. Who knows? Maybe can play some nickel. Mm-hmm. Um, Robinson's big. Robinson looks like an undersized linebacker sure, to me. Right. So he's your thumper. And then I uh, had an opportunity, like you said, to see Rim and um, – uh, I always forget how big he is. Yeah. I, I thought about that last year. Maybe it was the first spring he was here. I, I don't remember. I remember the first time I saw him, I was like, dang, he's he's big. And I just kind of forgot about him. But, yeah. I wouldn't mean, look good, too. Uh, okay. Wouldn't look good to me in, right. in some spots of the nickel. Uh, you know, I, I was, I was kind of watching. I kind of pay attention to who the coaches spent a lot of time kind of interacting with. And sure. I was noticing Laquan Robinson and Wooden were getting coached up a lot. From okay. Charles Kelly, got it. Uh, what that means, who knows? Uh, whether it's because they want to, sh- he wants to show them something, or he's counting on them. I don't know, but it seemed to be a lot of interaction with it's those. Good two. note. Yeah, that's a good note for sure, for sure. Um, all right, and then defensive line. I didn't really notice a whole lot of defensive linemen one way or the other. Um, you know, Jalen McLeod, which he was one of the guys that spoke to us at the media. Um, you know, player availability and. He had some kind of good moments, you know, talking about how, like, his main goal is getting to the NFL. And then he had a, an incredible um, tackle in the backfield of Jeremiah Cobb towards the end of our viewing window. It just shows that that burst is there. And he talked about, you know, he needs to work on his weaknesses so he can get to the NFL next year. And, of course, the next question was, what are your weaknesses? What are you working on? And he said, you know, to, to counter rush. He's like, right now I'm known as a speed rusher. I need to be able to put it all together and be able to do more and kind of have other ways to attack the quarterback. And so I thought that was, I thought that was insightful. Another thing he said that I thought was interesting, he was asked about Jamonta Waller, which is a reasonable question, um, the, the true freshman edge. Uh, they're calling him Bucks now. We're back, okay. to the, we're back to the Buck linebacker, um, which I like more than 
Jack. So um, asked about Jamonta Waller, and he's like, oh, he's a natural pass rusher. He's going to be a speed rusher, which – he, he's a little undersized. He I think. is. That's what I was going to tell. You. I yeah. noticed that, that they'll uh, they'll add some weight to him. You over can his tell time here. that he's a speed guy because yeah. when, you, when you have him stand next to McLeod or there's a difference. Falker, there's yeah. a difference. There's a difference, but he could still be impactful for sure. And then he was asked about Joe Phillips, you know, the other true freshman linebacker, and his response was, eh, you know, he's he need, you know he he needs to be coached up a little bit, and you know he kind of hesitated a little bit, and then he's asked about Brenton Williams, and he said Brenton Williams is uh, more coachable now than he was a year ago. I don't fully understand what that means, but but worth noting. You know, I wonder if, and this this brings the point up, what we saw from a defensive line standpoint, yeah, and with the inexperience with some of the guys, I, you know, Keys came and he he looked explosive off the ball a little bit, and you've still got Zacchaeus Gage Walker, Keys. Gage Keys, yeah. right? Not Austin Keys. Yeah. I wonder if. Auburn will pursue anybody in the spring portal along the defensive front. I mean, barring nobody leaving, that will be the biggest question mark, I think, is what does Auburn do on the defensive line? Unless something else happens, what does Auburn do on the defensive line? But any final notes before we wrap this up? I was real impressed with Durkin. I was watching him really, really closely and his intensity and how he coached as opposed to Ron Roberts last year watching. Mm -hmm. And there's a decided difference. I mean, we can talk about how cliche that is. what they needed. But I I just – you cannot keep your eyes off him when he's coaching. He's definitely intense, and the defense seems to feed off that. Cool. That's a great note to end on. No question about it. Daryl Dapper, how can people check out everything you have going on? Wednesdays and Fridays, Locked on Auburn with you. And then the basketball – Post game, we're going to be that SEC tournament SEC starting. tournament edition, baby. Yep. When you get that double bye, you get to wait two more days. But That's there right. we go. Yep, yep. So uh, he'll be back with us Friday morning and then Friday afternoon after the Auburn basketball game. And hopefully Saturday. Hopefully we keep winning. But you uh, please like this video. Please subscribe. Helps the channel out a ton. And we'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.